All right. So let's do our intro stuff. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook, please comment either watching live or watching replay. Watching lives get two entries. Um, watching replays for the month of December also get two entries. Um, shares get entries. All comments get entries. We're really trying to rack up um, your chances to win this month because it's the Christmas season, the season of giving. Um, so we're really trying to up those points for everybody. Um, sharing tips like a recipe or a really helpful tip that you've used with oils in the comments, those get two entries. Um, I think that's it for that. Um, if you're joining us on Zoom, and you don't want to be seen or heard on the public forum of YouTube, please make sure that you leave your mic and video crossed off. Um, when you sign in, I already have it edited to be that you're muted and your video's off, but please um, just make sure that it stays that way. Otherwise, if you don't care about being seen and heard on YouTube or on Facebook, um, we would love to have you join us. You can just click the unmute and the show video buttons and you can join us that way. Um, just checking to see if anybody has any questions here before we get started. Otherwise, Anne, do you want to start us off with one of your oils? I have one this week, but you and Janelle each have two. Hold on just a second. Put you on the spot there. That's all right. <laughs> I'm a big girl. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So I'm going to start us off with Rose of Sharon. Um, it is one of Young Living's single oil blends. Um, it's called, uh, it's known as Cystus, so you can order it outside of the, of the um, 12 oils of Angel Scripture kit. And um, and it has kind of like a, a honey-like fragrance. It's very soothing and uplifting. Um, and its plant origin is um, in Spain. And let's see. And it's also known as rock rose. And has been studied rock rose, yeah. Um, for and it's been studied for its effects on the regeneration of cells, um, and that is directly from Gary Young's um, own words, his books, um, and you know, so it's kind of cool. It can be diffused directly, um, inhaled, or taken as a dietary supplement, or even applied topically. So you could use use it for all three. Uh, three different things. There is this is vitality oil. I don't know if there's a vitality oil. Now I have to look it up. Yeah, you're gonna have to look that up. <laughs> Hang on, you keep I'll mean, you... look it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um. um Hmm. I'm just trying to think because, you know, I always want to be FDA compliant. So right. <laughs> trying to reword this in my head. Um, hmm. <laughs> Isn't it fun? It has soothing properties. <laughs> What I'm gonna say, <laughs> soothing properties. Um, but it really does smell. So this is this is what the bottles look like in the kit. They're all gold labeled. Um, and to be honest, um, I really don't use these a whole lot because they're part of a kit, you know. And I use them more for like when I do classes and stuff like that. But I really do think I'm going to start breaking these out a bit more because they smell really good. I mean, it's like, oh, wow, where have you been all my life? <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool that it's, um, you know, rock rose. That's what it's called. So, cool. yeah, 
Yeah, so I, I learned something a little bit more in depth on, on this um, particular oil. That's cool. Well, I can do one of my, Janelle says the baby is having trouble going to sleep. So she will oh. join us. She's just having some baby struggles. I'm hoping you can't hear mine in the baby monitor over there. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're keeping each other awake this evening. So mine is Anika or Anika. Um, I have not used this oil. It only comes in the Oils of Ancient Scripture kit, which I don't have. I'm hoping I get it for Christmas. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge to Luke. Um, but I was very excited to do research on this one because I love researching new oils. Um, so the Bible verse for this one is Exodus 30, 34. Then the Lord said to Moses, take fragrant spices, gum resin, anica, and galbanum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts. So this is where it's talking about um, Moses' anointing oil. So I did some research on the dgaryoung.com blog. He has his own website, and there are some things that he wrote. He wrote an entire book on um, the, oh shoot, what's that book called now? Totally blanking on it. The, the gift, the, the perfect gift. And do you remember the name of the book? It's all about the oils of scripture, but it's not like with the kit, the oils of ancient scripture. Gary Young wrote a book. I'll, I'll look it up after I'm done. It's something, something with the gift. And he talks about them, but this is this from his blog, dgaryoung.com. Before he died, he wrote a whole bunch of really good info, really good blog articles. And one of the oils that he talked about specifically was Anika. It was prized. It was a prized aromatic mentioned specifically one time in the Bible in Exodus 30, 34. So that's the verse that I just read to you. Um, this Anyaka stirred debate, whether it refers to a shellfish or a plant. The great Jewish scholar Rashi suggested that Anyaka is a kind of root, while the Talmud suggests that it came from an annual plant. Um, Gary Young believes that the Strax benzoin may have been the plant's source for Anyaka. Like frankincense and myrrh, benzoin is a resin. Anyaka was traditionally known for its comforting and soothing properties as well as its benefits for the skin. Ancient people used it to improve complexion and to help nourish the skin. Perhaps some of the beneficial aspects of benzoin were due not only to the oil itself, but the other oils compounded with it. So this is a really cool fun fact about like copaiba. Copaiba is a magnifier oil. So if you put it with a more expensive oil like frankincense, it will magnify how strong it works. Um, same thing if you're trying to save your rose or trying to save your jasmine, um, put a drop of copaiba with it and it will magnify it. So Anyaka, based on the research I did, seems to be kind of like that except that it's a catalyst that helps blend things. Like if you're putting an essential oil in water, obviously water and oils don't mix. So you put in a tiny pinch of salt or you put in a tiny little bit of sparkling water or you put in like the smallest amount of nature, right? Just something to get the oils to mix with the water. So Anika seems to be kind of a similar oil. Like it's a, it's a, it's a partner oil. They seem to like mix things. They seem to mix two oils together and enhance their properties of how well they work together. So instead of two plus two, you've got two times two and Anyaka is that the symbol in the middle. So that's kind of a cool, I had to read a lot of articles to break it down that simple, but that seems to be what they're all trying to get at in a very scientific type of way. But it seems like a really cool oil to make two oils work better together, to partner better together. So I thought that was really cool. Um, a few other things that I saw um, was that the tincture of benzoin was an antiseptic used in hospitals for more than 100 years. It was used since the mid 1800s. Anyaka may have been used in hospitals, but it does not have a hospital smell. It contains vanillin andalahide, which gives it the pleasant smell of vanilla. It was valued anciently for its ability to see speed healing of wounds and to help prevent uh, FDA compliance, to help prevent the need of white blood cells. <laughs> um, 
So one suggestion is to put it, put a drop on a cut or a scrape to help um, speed up healing and help prevent the need of white blood cells. Um, you can put a drop on a wound to help slow your body's like negative response to things. <laughs> Um, you can place a drop under each armpit instead of a deodorant, which smelling like vanilla, I think that would be wonderful. You can dilute one drop in a teaspoon of honey or in four ounces of rice or coconut milk and ingest it to help with a seasonal, Ill, uh, seasonal discomfort, like symptoms that you would experience when you're not feeling super great um, and you're needing cough drops, <laughs> like these cough drops. So <laughs> man, trying to get around these things. <laughs> so the one drop of Anyaka in a teaspoon of honey or in four ounces of coconut milk or rice milk works really well if you're already doing Thieves cough drops. So that's a, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> um, Another suggestion is to put several drops on the abdomen to help ease the gripping discomforts. Um, combine with rose and V6 and um, use that for a full body massage to help elevate your mood. Can you imagine rose oil and Anyaka, which smells like vanilla, or our new vanilla essential oil, and mixing that in V6 and getting a massage? That would be fun. Fantastic. I would take that as a Christmas present or a Valentine's Day present. Um, you can mix it with lavender or with peppermint and diffuse for a warming and soothing effect. Um, there is a side note here that you are not supposed to diffuse Anyaka alone because it's very thick. It's apparently a very, very, very thick oil because it is from a resin. Um, I've also noticed that with vetiver. So if you, is it? Yeah, vetiver. Patchouli. Um, there's two oils that are very, very, very viscous, so I don't diffuse those by themselves. So it's got the same warning on here for Anyaka. Vetiver is one of them. Is it vetiver? Okay, that's what I thought it was. Um, and then the last one they've got, and this is pre the Thieves chest rub, um, but I would assume that this would still work really, really well. It says mix the Anyaka with V6 oil and rub on your chest to help break up mucus and to ease coughs. So for an oil that I really didn't know anything about, holy cow, does it have a lot of uses that I really want to use this for. Like this sounds like a fantastic oil and I really want to get my hands on some. So that's what I've got for mine. That's my one oil for this evening. So Janelle, do you want to do one? And then Anne and then Janelle again, and then I can wrap us up. Sure. Awesome. My first oil um, for tonight is hyssop. I think that's how you say it. Not really sure, but that's how I'm going to talk. So I'm going to say it. Sorry I'm late to the party, you guys. The baby would did not want to go to sleep tonight. I'd like go to lay him down and the eyes would open up. Go to sleep. It's all right. Close we all have those so, days. <laughs> anywho, we made it. All right. So hyssop. Um, I didn't know a lot. The two oils that I'm presenting on tonight, I didn't know a lot about either. So I learned a few things as well. Same, same as what Tess had mentioned. So hyssop is another oil of the, in the ancient scripture collection. Um, it is a biblical oil that was sacred to ancient Greece. Um, it's got a fresh woodsy scent that's slightly sweet. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, I don't know if you have this one, mom, and maybe you can describe it a little bit better. Um, hyssop is no noted, especially for its purifying properties. Um, so each oil has, is, is designated like, it's called O-R-A-C, um, which basically tells you like it's, how do I describe this? Um, I don't want to say energy, but kind of like energy. The higher the ORAC, the better it is at reducing free radicals in your body. So the ORAC of hyssop is um, 209,167. So it's pretty high. Um, other uses are antioxidant properties. Um, it 
is, let's see here. Let's see what I can say that is compliant. <laughs> so look up. And then I have been struggling with that all my. <laughs> um, one of, it is a key ingredient in Immu Power, which is one of the blends that Young Living makes. And so if you think about Immu Power and what you could use that for, um, it's kind of in the name. So Hyssop would be a really good one for immune support. Um, it's also in the Relieve It blend. It is supposed to be uplifting as well as calming. Um, but mainly purifying and cleansing. If you think about that, purifying and cleansing and um, supporting those processes in your body, that is what it's really good for. Um, as far as use goes, you can use it either topically, so you can dilute with V6 and apply it to wherever you want, apply to desired area as needed. You can diffuse it. Um, it is not one that comes as a vitality oil. So um, we know that the vitality line is all of the oils are generally regarded as safe for internal consumption by the FDA. So this is not one that comes as a vitality. So I would stick with topical and aromatic use for this one. And I don't even know what it, I haven't smelt hyssop. So I don't even know what it would be good to diffuse with or maybe by itself. I don't even know. It's what I'm gonna have to look into. I, um, I, I was just gonna say, I think I might have to bring these oils with me. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, bring your kit, bring your kit. Road trip. <laughs> so a couple, um, okay, so I found a couple recipes. I really like Lindsay Elmore. She's one, she's one of my favorite people to follow. She was a pharmacist, well, she's still a pharmacist, but a pharmacist in a previous life. And now she's kind of directed her energy and time into more teaching about holistic health, functional medicine, that sort of thing. So um, five ways to use hyssop. She gave five different uses. One of them is a PMS relief rub. So you use cinnamon bark, clove, hyssop, lavender, rose, clary sage, and then sweet almond oil and mix it all together as as a mixture i mean you could you you could just put it into a a roller and just use it for some pms relief or you could mix it up and however you want to do it i'd probably do it in the roller because then it'd be less messy um so that's a first use beauty and hygiene she says hyssop is Wonderful when it's added to facial cleansers and moisturizers. It may help improve complexion and encourage skin cells to be as healthy as they can. How about that? Diminishing the appearance of fine lines and scars. Number three, gently cleanse minor abrasions. So if you got a cut or a scrape, um, just like anytime my kids fall down, bonk their heads, or get a cut or a burn or anything like that. Usually the first two things that I grab are lavender and copaiba. So especially if they have, my boys seem to always fall on their heads. So if they fall on their head, they get a big old goose egg, seriously. Get some lavender, put some copaiba on it. It, it works awesome. My girls get lavender um, so and frankincense. Yeah, frankincense is a good one too. I like the copaiba for when they fall in their noggins because you know with the big goose egg i like that for the benefits that i see in making the goose egg not so big but the lavender and the frankincense i agree translator <laughs> yeah I, this is our <laughs> fda like translation <laughs> um okay so cleanse minor abrasions you can apply a bit of diluted hyssop to minor cuts burns scrapes um, etc. This one I found was interesting. Number four, p calm pets anxieties. Um, Sydney loses his freaking marbles every time there's like a drop of rain or a storm. Fourth of July is awful. Um, so it's, yeah, basically if you diffuse the hyssop, it's supposed to try, it's supposed to alleviate some of some fears and anxieties of the pet. I didn't know that. Cool. Also, P.S. I just used the pet, the animal scent shampoo for the first time a couple days ago. I lifted 
our overweight dog into the tub because he was smelly. You guys, you got to get that. If you have pets, animal scents, shampoo, you have got to get it. Now I'm like, now I'm like all around before I was like, oh, you stink. Get away from me. And now I'm like, oh, you smell good. Come here. <laughs> so <laughs> there's my little side note for that. Is that one um, and treated like the kid scents and the adult shampoo and stuff? It is. Um, I didn't dilute it though, because he was really stinky. Um, and it, his coat is so thick thick so I would do if you got a short haired dog you probably could dilute it and be just fine but if your dog has long hair like ours I wouldn't dilute it because I don't think you're going to get the lather and the benefits that um that you need to get them clean but if you get a short dog you know like my brother and his wife have a Boston Terrier and uh what is Nini mom oh crap I can't remember what she is Anyway, short haired dog. Um, then you could probably dilute it and be just fine. And it works on cats yeah. too, right? I know we're slightly off topic, but I get these questions a lot and I don't have animals. Yeah, it's supposed to be good for really any animal. Um, Milo likes the idea of playing in the tub. Although I feel like if I ever tried to bathe her, she would probably claw my eyes out. So <laughs> we do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay so side note sorry i just thought about that with the whole pet thing so animal scent shampoo you guys if you got a dog get yourself some all right um and then the last way that she gives for hyssop use is diffusing it when you in the winter months if you get a little tickle so diffuse it or dilute it and rub it on your chest would be um would be another way to another benefit to use hyssop what did it smell like when you smelled it um it there's definitely i mean it's definitely uplifting i mean it definitely is like oh um but all those things you just described oh yeah i i could see that especially you know if you're you know you just need to get your head cleared out, that would be the one to diffuse. Um, okay. So is it reminiscent of like Raven? Similar. Okay. I think it's similar. Yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. For sure. So. All right. And all you're right. up. Okay. Well, the other one that um, I have for tonight is aloes. Um, and aloes is really sandalwood, which I did not know um, until I kind of dove in today. I was like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. And so I got out my little bottle of aloes and I'm like, okay, let me, let me just see. Because I have Royal Hawaiian sandalwood and I'm like, I know what that smells like. So I'm like, Oh, yes. Where have you been? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, it's believed that the aloes referred to in the Bible may have been um, fragrant sandalwood, a spice ac accessible to the residents of ancient Palestine. Um, and the, the biblical reference that they give here is John 1939. And it says, and there came also Nicodemus, which at, at the first at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, so myrrh and sandalwood, um, about, uh, about a hundred pound weight. So that was a lot of aloes that he brought. I mean, he brought a ton, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and to dive a little bit deeper into what the sandalwood kind of smells like, it's it it is it is a stronger aroma. Um, it's sweet, warm, and woody, all at the same time. Um, it kind of has a little bit of the, the sensual, romantic undertones, which when it's diffused, I mean, it just Oh, it just makes the room smell so wonderful. And you're just kind of like, okay, this is awesome. Um, 
It is comes from a, and I'm going to try to pronounce this, um, the Santalum Panaculatum tree. It grows only in the Hawaiian Islands, which I did know this. I did know this. That's why sandalwood, if it's out of stock, it's because there's they can't get it. Nowhere um, else to grow it. So you have to be patient. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I can say is that the sandalwood tree, in order for yeah. them to um, harvest it, it has to be almost dead to yeah. get the oh, oil, yeah. um, out of out of it um, yeah. at its peak. Tree's like almost dead, which is which is crazy to me that it's almost right. at the end of it, but it gives this beautiful oil. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but it is it's a fantastic oil, and that's and the reason that it's so expensive is because it's so hard to come by. Um, you know, it's one of those one of those oils that save up, save up, <laughs> save up, and then you treat yourself um, because it it is one of those oils that it's it's so worth it um or you sneak it in with the oils of ancient scripture kit that too because <laughs> it's in there <laughs> that too that too um yeah it's i mean my 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 poor little box here is kind of like falling apart but it's um it was well worth getting the kit because there's so many awesome awesome oils we kit. should mention your box says 12 oils of ancient scripture and mm -hmm. now there's only 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two of them were taken out, spikenard and gal galbanum, galbanum. Yes, I still have it. <laughs> I've smelled your spikenard. Oh, <laughs> spikenard, it's, not it's, good. It's so, terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. I'm actually smelling. very glad they removed that oil. <laughs> Yeah, and they removed them because they became endangered species. Yes, which they, is surprising considering how disgusting. It was. <laughs> they actually didn't source them anymore. Right. Is what I. And believe it or not, I actually had a gal that absolutely loved spike nard, and and because we couldn't get it any longer. And it, came, it was in my kit. I'm like, hey, I'll make you a deal because what am I going to do with it? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I can't, I mean, we, it's not available for purchase any longer. And so she was happy as could be. And I was happy as could be. So it was a win win situation. I just figured we should mention that because as I was doing research, I did see 12 oils of ancient scripture and I was like, oh, yeah, they had to discontinue those two. So. Yep. As everyone else is doing their research on these oils, the one that's available is the 10 oils of ancient scripture. You're not missing something. You're not behind on mm -hmm. anything. We have 10 now. So, all right. You can finish your oil. Uh, I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The next one that I have is Myrtle. Um, Myrtle is, it's one that I have, but I haven't dabbled into using a lot and now that I'm like rereading what it's good for I'm like you gotta use this oil Janelle so myrtle um let me okay it's got a clear fresh herbaceous scent similar to eucalyptus it kind of has that eucalyptusy scent to it um it supports the respiratory system it is great for skin support and also for your hair um what else? Okay, this one has an ORAC of 253,512, so a little bit higher on that scale, even more so than um, hyssop. The other things that I'm seeing that it's good for um, is emotional balance and support, which I did not know. Um, it's also supposed to be beneficial for supporting your thyroid. Um, and then also for, so eucalyptus is great for this time of year. If you've got some 
junk going on in this area. Myrtle, same thing. Good for your respiratory support, for your throat, your lungs, that area. Um, trying to see what else I can say compliantly here. Mm-hmm. Can't say any of that. Okay. Also good for reducing fine lines and wrinkles. Um, Don't you love how versatile these oils are? I mean, like if you go yes. to Walmart and you look at a shelf, you're not going to find one product that supports your respiratory system and also supports the appearance of your skin. I mean, like they, yeah. there's no two products, but with Young Living, you can buy one oil and it does both of those things and more. And it's a higher antioxidant thing. I mean, that's crazy. We are so blessed. Yes. The other thing that I found interesting was that um, it, it also has some properties that are beneficial for um, like libido and those sorts of things, which I did not know. I was like, hmm, interesting. So yeah, very versatile oil, but smells, I would say you, either of you have it. It's like a, it's like a toned down version of eucalyptus. Like it's not, <laughs> a, like yeah. not as, I would agree. It's not quite Kinda as happy. potent. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yes. All right, that's all I got. Um, do either of you have a motivational quote this week, or shall I share mine? You can go ahead and share yours. All right, sounds good. So I have a joke. I share a joke. You, you have a joke? <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. All right, share your yeah. joke. I want to hear it. Actually, I have two of them, but let's see. I'll do the one that I can really remember first. Okay, this is Isaiah. Mom, where do snowmen keep their money? And I said, I don't know, where? He goes, in snow banks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and And then the other one was, what kind of owls live at the North Pole? Snowy owls? Elf owls. There you go. There elf you owls. Go. Which is true. There are, well, not that they live at the North Pole, but there are elf owls. The, the, I think they live. I'm pretty sure they live in the North Pole. So there's that. <laughs> okay. <There you go. laughs> I like those. I'm telling the, snow ba- the snowman one to my aunt. She loves um, snowmen. I'm definitely hearing that one. Um, so the motivational quote for this week that I really like is if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. I have a tendency to like, and Anne and Janelle both know this. I have a tendency to like make these big goals and these big plans and these big dreams. And like, I'm going to accomplish all of this and it's going to be fantastic. And then I get like really down on myself and really discouraged that I missed this mark or I missed this deadline or I'm behind on this because life happens. I have laundry and dishes just like everybody else. And then I just kind of like give up on the whole project. And I've had to learn to lower my expectations of myself and of my husband and of my kids. And instead of expecting these great things, like the whole house being cleaned all in one day or getting all of my Facebook posts scheduled for the month um, or, or things like that. Um, I've had to learn to do small things very well and in smaller amounts of time. So like clean one room a day for the week, you know, like that kind of a thing and um, make sure I clean all the dishes really well instead of just doing the whole sink load and then I'm trying to put them away and the plastics are still greasy or there's still food on the fork or something, you know, like just do the small things that you have time for now. Do them very, very well. Because it'll save you having to repeat the crap again later. Or it'll save you the stress of destroying family time and yelling at your kids all the time and being upset with your husband all the time. So if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. I really like that quote. That's really awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. We should do that for everything we do, you know? Everything should be that way. 
just think we'd be so much less stressed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining us live. If you're watching the replay, please remember to comment replay so that we get your questions posted. I didn't do the wheel. <laughs> Here I am doing the sign off routine and we haven't even spun the wheel yet. Hang on. All right. Let me make sure I've got everybody. Make sure I've got all the comments tallied. Oh, Wendy gives us a really good tip. She likes to put her peppermint vitality oil in her anise candy. She makes anise candy and puts in peppermint essential oils. That's a really cool idea. I like that. So Wendy gets two more additions to the wheel for a helpful tip comment. Let's get that thrown in here. Okay, I think the wheel is ready. And now I'm going to share my screen. Share screen. All right, everybody see it? Awesome. All right, here we go. Who's gonna win this week? <laughs> Wonderful, congrats, Debbie. All right, so we will get a prize to you in the mail. Um, I was in the middle of the sign off thing. Make sure you comment watching replay if you're watching the replay. Um, we've done the wheel for the lives. So thank you for commenting that. Um, if, oh, it's gone. It was there. If you have questions, make sure you contact myself or Anne or Janelle. If you don't have a kit, but you'd like one, um, send any of us a message and we'll get you hooked up. Um, we love helping you get deals on things and helping you get things at um, discounts. We can also let you in on if there's any exclusive items. Like right now, we've got the holiday gift guide out. Um, so if you have any questions on anything like that, please definitely contact us. And then if you, when you're ready to get your kit, um, make sure you ask one of us for our enroller number so that you get the discount and you get access to all of our team educational stuff. Because we've got lots of extra education besides what we do for oily fireside chats. So um, I think that's it. Um, we hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Safe travels if you're traveling. Um, I'm not going to tell you to eat healthy because who cares? <laughs> it's Christmas. Um, but we hope you enjoy family time, be that live or virtual this year. We hope that you are very, very blessed and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.